Hello, welcome. Today we'll start with the first chapter, Introduction to Mobile Applications Development and Android. We will cover the introduction to mobile, including devices and application development. We'll get to know a little bit about the history and evolution of mobile, and also brief introduction to Android. Mobility is defined to be having the capability of being able to move or to be moved easily. It is very important to get things moved easily. Therefore, in order to get things move easily, there are certain properties to mobile devices. And these are what causing mobile application development to be slightly different compared to traditional applications writing on desktop based systems. Mobile devices are started to be commercialized in 1983. And this is how a mobile device looked like back then. It's very expensive, heavy, and very basic. It only allows you to make calls and receive calls. But as time continues to progress, we see more interesting aspects added into the phones, including text messages, we have music, and then we have simple applications. Today, we are going into a smartphone era where mobile applications become more and more important and it's easier for us to actually obtain various types of applications to get various types of job done. Besides that, it's also possible to actually have various types of mobile devices that are not just a phone. This includes tablets, music players, cameras, watches, and a, a wide variety of possible devices that can be programmed to be small, light, and portable. Generally, there are some characteristics to mobility. First is portability. The most important aspect is that one can easily carry the device and bring it all around the place. Therefore, the size and the weight of the device is usually small. This is very important because it will affect the actual characteristics of the devices and also giving challenges to the developers in terms of writing applications that can work on such small devices. Besides that, usability is also very important. The mobile device should be usable by different type of people in different type of environments. They should not be restricted to be used at only a certain location or certain setting, but it can be useful all over the place. They can be affected by user characteristics, environmental characteristics, and device characteristics. Functionality is also very important for the mobile devices. Mobile applications can provide functions so that there are such functionalities running on the mobile devices that the user can use it to get certain job done. These mobile applications can be standalone and could also depend on other systems or other users. Connectability is a very important part that makes mobile devices great. The capability to connect to a different device distance away is very important. There are three modes of connectivity. One that allows connection to the backend system all the time. One that will connect to the backend system intermittently throughout a period duration and one that never connects to use the backend system, therefore can be working totally offline. 
Handheld mobile devices have certain features in general. First, for the processor, it's definitely going to be slower compared to any desktop devices that is actually being launched in the same time. The main reason is to conserve battery power. Because of the size of the battery due to portability, the processor cannot be too fast because it will be too battery, consum con the battery consuming and therefore would not last long. Therefore, processor speed is usually controlled to be lower than the average PCs or desktops. In the past, the processor speed can be extremely small, but now most of the processor speed are a lot more decent and allowing a lot of tasks to be conducted in a much more normal manner and a more acceptable speed. <clears throat> Next is the operating system. The operating systems in mobile devices are different compared to the standard operating systems that we use in desktop systems. They are specifically designed to be used on mobile devices. Popular operating system in mobile includes Android, iOS, Windows Mobile, which are the three largest players. The display is also small because of the size of the device and some cheaper phones and cheaper mobile devices can have less powerful displays. The memory size is also small. It can go down to a few hundred kilobytes for some very basic devices, up to a few gigabytes, but generally not as good as what we get in desktops where we have a much higher maximum RAM that we can add in. The input is also made more challenge because of the size. Due to the smaller size, we do not have a sophisticated keyboard or mouse and etc. Some of the devices may be designed to have a small keyboard that is physically attached to the device, but due to the device size, the keyboard is very small. However, this is not popular nowadays, and most of them resort to using on-screen keypads. Cell phones, smartphones that we have nowadays, are generally using touchscreen as their input, and therefore, most of this Typing are done using this small on-screen keypad that is made available on the touch screen. Some will use handwriting recognition system to help assist writing more complicated characters such as Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Hindi and other scripts that are a little bit more difficult to type. Voice input were also more popular compared to desktop applications to help assist in easier input. Mobile devices generally have a mean to connect to different types of networks and there are a few ways of connection including Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G and etc. according to devices. For the extensibility of mobile devices, they can be designed to have additional memory, wireless modems, cameras, GPS. However, it depends on the mobile device itself during design phase, and after that, it's quite difficult to custom made an actual device according to user's need. So most of these are pre-designed, but it is free for the manufacturers to control what to be added into a device during the design phase. The price can be highly variable depending on the specifications of this device. So it can be very cheap and very basic to very expensive phones with very good features and also very good specifications. For the wireless networks, 
it first started to be developed by Bell Labs. Advanced mobile phone services were designed back then. But today, most of us are using the Global System for Mobile Communication, GSM, for our basic, basic services that are provided by the service providers for receiving calls and also to make calls. <clears throat> the basic way to connect to internet on mobile devices is to use the GPRS, General Packet Radio Service. This is highly available throughout most regions and even in certain areas that are very rural or even in forested areas, although signals could be unstable in very remote areas. This is a very slow connection, but at least a basic one that allows us to connect to internet when there are no better technology. Wide Wideband CDMA provides us 3G technology and this definitely increases the data transmission rate and is widely available in most major cities and larger towns today. And this is one of the most important basic technology for us to connect to internet in most urban and suburban areas. There are also some other wireless technologies and 4G technology is one of the most important technology that we are looking at today for basic mobile networking that we are using in a lot of large cities. This is a comparison of roughly where are the speed limits of the different technology. 4G including LTE can actually theoretically go up to 1 Gbps. There are different types of fields in mobile that we can actually try to classify. A lot of these are duplicated with one another and overlapping. So the first term that we often hear is mobile computing. Mobile computing allows us to have devices being programmed to be functioning and they are allowed to be moved around so most of other phones that we are seeing today can be considered as a mobile computing device. It allows actions to be done that are actually computed and you can use it in different locations as you bring the device along. We also see anywhere, anytime information. This is the idea that allows us to get information wherever we go. And with the basic connection that we have nowadays, it is possible for us to obtain this sort of information as long as we are connected to the internet. The virtual home environment allows us to experience network that is similar to a home network. Our home network usually have fixed IP. So when we are moving around, as we move, our connection may be connected to different mobile, mobile services tower. And we did not experience the shift of this kind of connection. And we will feel that we are always connected to a same connection. And this is the most important part of mobile devices that allows us to experience such a kind of a network experience that is similar to when we are at a home or office environment. And other type of fields and some of the important ones that we are seeing includes pervasive computing. Pervasive computing is getting important because we are seeing more and more technology going to be more pervasive in a way such as they are appearing in our cars, it can appear in our clothing, it can appear in some chairs, tables and different common objects around us. When this kind of pervasive compu 